Right. So today we're going to be interpreting graphs of functions and mainly looking at intervals of increasing and decreasing or constant, um, relative, maximum, and minimum values, and x-intercept. So I feel like all of those things you guys probably pretty confident with in Algebra 2. We're going to do something a little differently. We're not just going to look at the graph and tell uh, the intervals or whatever. We're going to actually interpret the graph. So all of, not all, most of our graphs are going to have some contextual meaning behind them. So uh, one of my favorite ones to do with this where we're like comparing how things vary is um, the amount of money someone spends advertising and then the amount they profit from that. And so that People in business really do use this to know, like, if I spend this much money, I'm not going to get as much profit because I'm spending too much and I'm not selling it. So anyway, um, there are some very great applications for these types of problems. So anyway, um, a graph can show how two quantities vary with respect to each other. And a function is increasing. on the interval of this domain if the input, if as the input values increase, the output values increase as well. Great. And a focus in our standards for AP free calculus is this next statement that if A is less than B, if the function is increasing, then that would mean that f of a is also less than f of b. So it should, on the graph, be lower than the point at f of b. Okay, and then we have a similar statement with decreasing. So a function f is decreasing <clears throat> on an interval of its domain if, as the values sorry, the input values increase, the output values decrease. And in the case of decreasing intervals, then if F, sorry, if A is less than B, this time F of A should be greater than F of B. It should be graphed higher in this case. All right, and then um, on the graphs, kind of like all the good stuff, if it's a contextual situation, all the like interesting things happen um, on the x-intercepts, the relative, sometimes it's called local, maximum and minimum values, and then the intervals of increasing and decreasing. That's kind of where the important information is revealed. So those things can reveal important info about a context. So with this first example, we have Easton, and he's walking around. So he walks from his house to the bank and then to the grocery store before returning home. The graph shows his distance from home, which is D of T in miles, and uh, or T minutes after leaving his home. So I'm going to go ahead and label the horizontal axis T and the vertical axis D of T. But the units are already labeled, so time in minutes, distance from home in miles, so that's good. Okay, so what do you guys think? A, how long does the trip take him to? Sure. 25 minutes, good. So that's how long it takes to complete the whole graph. All right. How many minutes is Easton at the grocery store? Okay, so where did he go first? The bank. So this first flat section is the time he spent in the bank. And then the second flat section is the time he spent in the grocery store. All right. So 
Here's the average between 40 minutes and 55 minutes. So the question was how many minutes? So we're going to say 15 minutes. And then how do you know um, his distance from home is not changing? So um, you can do intervals different ways. So you can do inequalities, is what I did yesterday with the domain and range, or you can do interval notation, which is what I'm going to do today. And I think you're going to remember it. Um, so interval notation, you either use parentheses or you use brackets. And um, the number on the left is the smallest number in the interval. The number on the right is the largest number in the interval. Now, I am going to use parentheses for these because I feel like um, at those points, at the end points, it's not really increasing or decreasing, it's kind of changing over. Don't get frustrated if on the AP exam, like on a multiple choice, they use brackets. It's okay. As long as the numbers on the inside are right for these intervals, then you're going to, it's not a super big deal. So C asks, on which time interval or intervals is D decreasing? So let's start with that. So decreasing is going to be this section right here. Now, I'm sure your algebra, I'm making a super straight line. I'm sure your algebra 2 teacher told you that only the x matters. In this case, only the time matters. We only care about between what two times um, this is happening. And so what do you guys think between what two times? 55 and 75. So the smallest number where the function is um, decreasing is 55, the largest is 75. So what do you think this means in the context of the problem? His distance is decreasing, what's he doing? He's going back. Yeah, he's walking back towards his house. So east and he's walking toward his house. Right, and then at what time or times is Easton exactly one mile from his house? So that should be two different times, about right here and here. Um, so this doesn't look exactly at a mark, so I'm going to say about 12 minutes and about 68 minutes. And then one of our standards that might be new for you guys is to actually create graphs that uh, follow certain um, situations with increasing and decreasing, maximum and minimum, or contextual situations. So um, number two isn't contextual, but we know a section where the function is decreasing, increasing, and constant, and we're going to create a graph. Now where this graph falls on the y doesn't matter. All right, and then how steep your slope is when you're increasing, decreasing, doesn't matter. So we all can create different graphs and they can all be right, as long as they, you know, the intervals are correct. So we're going to be decreasing from negative 5 to 0. So where x is negative 5 to 0, so you can make it super, super steep. You can make it curvy. However you want to, just between those two numbers, we need to be falling from left to right. So I'm going to make it kind of curvy. Okay. 
And you don't have to stop at negative two on the y. You could stop at negative five on the y, or negative three, or you could have a positive place where you stop as long as you're following. All right, and then um, from zero to two, we want to be increasing. So I'm going to do my increasing as a straight line from zero to two, and I'm going to increase a lot. And then everywhere greater than two, we are going to have a constant uh, horizontal line. So wherever you stopped. Now I said wherever you stop, these actually don't have to be connected. So you can have like a piecewise function or three separate segments if you want to. Um, they don't have to be connected. All right, any questions on that? Okay, have you guys ever played the game Pass the Pig? not play this game. Apparently you have two small plastic pigs that you kind of toss like you toss dice. And depending on how they land, you earn points. Um, so a player can continue to roll until they are satisfied with their score for that round. But if the pigs land both land on their right side, the player loses all their points accumulated for that round. If one pig ever lands on top of another pig, this undignified position causes the players to lose all points from all previous rounds. I don't know how often that happens, but it sounds like it's terrible. All right, um, the first player to earn 100 points wins. The total score for a player in points is modeled by this function s, um, where y is equal to s of r is shown, where r is the measured in rounds of play for the game. Okay. A wants us to identify, identify the intervals on which S of R is increasing. I'm going to go ahead and call this S of R. All right, so we have a few. We have three different intervals where the function is increasing. So I'm just going to describe that in interval notation, so between 0 and 1. Two and three, four and five. Right. Over which of these intervals did a player earn the most points? Let me guess. Okay. Zero. Zero and one. Identify the intervals on which S of R is constant, and then what does that mean? So S of R is constant from 1 to 2. Okay, what do you think that means? No points on that round. No points in round two. All right, C, identify the maximum um, of S of R, interpret what it means. So on this maximum, we are only going to use the S of R score. So I know in algebra two, a lot of times you gave a maximum, minimum as an order pair. Not technically what this one is asking. It's asking what is the largest value of the function. So what is the largest value of the function? Six. And what does that mean? That's, that's most points. So 60 points is this player's highest score. Okay, so S of R decreased during round four. So what happened for this to happen where the person lost all their points from the previous round? Zero. 
Well, if they land on the right side, that means you just hold on. Let me just make sure because I've never one landed on top of the other one. So if they land on the right side. Um, the player loses all points from that round, which is must have been what happened on round two. But then, if they lose all their points from all the rounds, then one pick landed on top of another. Alright, so when Katie reviews the graph, she explains that the player ended the game with a total of 30 points. Is this accurate? As long as I understand this game right, the only thing that might not be accurate is if there were more rounds after round five. But I'm going to say yes as long as the game ended at round five. All right, so I'm going to give you guys your assignment. Um, you, the second one is similar to this pig game where you're interpreting um, all this stuff from the graph. Just be careful on that one. I think it's a little more difficult to interpret because the function is all about um, the rate at which people enter something. So just be careful that you're not saying,